welcome to the Metal Voice today. Back on the show, Raggedy Ann on acid himself, the yes. Snyder. Yes, yes. So Better they, looking Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> so last night, I slipped on the Twisted Christmas, curled up in my ball in my favorite jammies and, lit and read Z2 comics. He's not going to take it. Graphic novel. And it was a, it was a great read. You know, as a fanboy and a, and a comic book, comic book former comic book geek, uh, I was pretty amazing to see myself immortalized in, uh, you know, as a comic figure. It's pretty cool. You know, it's interesting. It's like the origin story, right? It's like you know, Batman, you know, like the, the beginning, right? The D. Snyder, the beginning. Who was he? How did he grow up? Did he get bitten by a bat or he got bitten by rock and roll? That's what we're right. finding out, right? Well, that's that was the interesting thing about Z2 Comics. They approached me with the idea. And uh, when they said, you know, it was like, and right now, C word, as I call it, censorship is a hot button topic right now, uh, as much as it ever was. And uh, they said, we want, but we want to explore, like, how did you become that guy, that voice? How did you come to be there at that moment in time to speak out? And uh, I think, and, and there's a frame as you saw in there where I'm in the cradle. I mean, they go back to the damn cradle, uh, telling my story. Origin. It's an origin. It's an origin. It is story. An origin. It, yeah, exactly. So you know, it's interesting. Go ahead, Alan. TMRC, Sorry. 1985. I remember it was yesterday. You come on with the greatest head of hair in the history of <laughs> rock metal. Stole my head, David. people. Stole my head. And you sit down and and uh, with the full full uh, uniform, like you said, metal uniform, and uh, you start dishing it to them. Uh, I mean, what what has changed since then? Has anything changed? Changed censorship wise. Uh, wow, it's it's changed in a big way. I mean, where that was a right wing puritanical evangelical effort to you know to reel in the demon rock and roll, uh, very right wing. Now we're pendulum swung. We're all the way to the left with the super cuddle, cut, molly coddling. Let's wrap everybody in bubble wrap and protect them from bad words and offensive things. And if you don't listen to us, we're going to cancel your ass. You know, uh, so it's a, it's gone from being a, a really a right wing thing to a left thing, you know, but it's still censorship. Anyway, slice it. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people misunderstand what freedom of speech means. People uh, are asking me that all the time. I said, what's your biggest concern about censorship and free speech or whatever? And I say that people don't understand what freedom of speech means, what it is. First of all, it is essentially, it should be a God-given right. It shouldn't be a government-given right. Every person should be allowed to speak freely. But there are many, many places in this world where if you speak your mind, you will be put to death. You will be arrested. We know many cases in Russia right now. So it's it's a gift that our forefathers preserved. In the United States, I don't know what the... It's the uh, same thing. It's the same thing. Preserve, say, First Amendment, your right to speak free, a freedom of speech as an inalienable, inalienable right. But what people don't understand is it's also, it's a privilege and a responsibility. And the most basic example I can give is if you go online and say that Karen had sex with the football team when she did not and you know she did not and your sole intent is malicious and hurtful and potentially lethal because there are many kids who were committing suicide over the humiliation they suffer that's not free speech saying a lie knowing it's a lie and with intent to hurt somebody, that's not free speech. So there is a responsibility with free speech. Should the government be regulating it? No. I am. I am. I'm going to have a new. Mo I'm working with some uh, charitable organization, and I'll be making a new movement to educate people. But the people should know. It shouldn't. The government should have to tell us. People should just understand that they've got a very power. The voice is powerful, and the word is human. The words are powerful, and you have a right to speak them. But you need you should be speaking truth. Free speech is not lies. You know, going okay. back to that day, I mean, John Denver was there. Everybody was a little concerned what he would be saying, but he spoke up. He poignantly, and I mean, even compared the process to Nazi Germany. But it seemed like he got away. 
Does that lead credence to your thought that it was more or less heavy metal that was persecuted that day rather than other rock forms? Well, first of all, you know, amazing respect to the late John Denver and Frank Zappa, both for stepping forward, both for speaking out, both for being eloquent. Um, and uh, and John Denver, in many ways, was more damaging than anybody else because he was as 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 American as mom and apple pie doing his Christmas holiday special and making movies. And they were falling. The senators were falling all over John. I mean, they just well, they expected him to stand with them. And Frank and I, we were in the back. We were unsure. We knew where he should be. We weren't sure if he would stand where he should. And he stood tall that day. This said, I was the only one there who was actually on the Filthy 15. I was on the list of the 15 most reviled songs. Uh, you know. And by the way, I want to point out, Bruce Springsteen was also on that list. And Cindy Lauper was on that list. And uh, yeah, there was Judas Priest and Wasp. But, but it was a really, uh, by the way, and, and some people have conflated and confused things. There was no hip hop. Hip hop wasn't an issue in 1985. That came a few years later. It was not an ethnic, people said, oh, it was an ethnic thing. No, there was black artists, there was white artists, there were females, there were males, there were clearly gay guys on there. And there was, you know, there was, it was, it was very even handed in its dis dislike of rock and roll. Okay, I'm gonna play devil, um, but I'm gonna play devil's advocate here, right? We had the Cindy Loppers, we had the Madonnas, we had the Twisted Sister, which was kind of like just regular lyrics that you'd find anywhere throughout time and history, right? But then you had like Merciful Fate, which I love, by the way. You know, uh, things like suck the blood from the unholy knife, say after me, my soul belongs to Satan. Does that belong in society as freedom of speech? Well, you know, and, you know, I, I get, first of all, I, I want to just um, um, inform the audience. Originally, um, this PMRC was looking for a, a, a rating system that was uh, that had different qualifications. So there was V for violence. They said, we're not going to take it, it was violent. And there was S for satanic. Oh, no, yes. it was O. O for a cult. O for a cult. Um, I think they had B for bestiality. I don't know. But they wanted to have a real breakdown here of what it was. And um, sadly, they negotiated with the Amer American Recording Institute, who agreed to the warning parental advisory sticker. Before we spoke, Frank and I were informed in the back room that they'd already agreed to a compromise sticker, which really sucked. Imagine going in being told you, to, to fight and being told you lost already. It almost made you feel like, well, why am I even bothering? Uh, to our credit, we went in there. But, you know, there are differences, and I've had my my moments uh, with music. Um, Cannibal Corpse yeah. is, a, is a bridge too far for me. I was doing my first metal show. I got that first Cannibal Corpse album. I threw it in the garbage. But do they have the right to- That's what I'm getting at. Those lyrics, yes, they do. We have the right to not buy it, not listen to it, not broadcast it. Um, that's the that is where the censorship comes in. We can self censor. We don't have to listen to the mentors when they say, uh, "I'll make you sniff my anal vapor. I'll use your face for toilet paper." Uh, I mean, even the senators could not laugh when they read those out loud that day. So yeah, I mean, this is where. And look, you know, I, at that time, I said, it "Is not the government's job." And I said, just like I said a moment ago about censorship, I said, it is my, as a parent, it is my job. Uh, obviously, you're concerned about 10, 11, 12 year olds, I guess. So uh, my job. And when the first Tenacious D record came out and my kids got it and loved it. And my daughter heard, heard Wonder Boy and she heard some of the fun songs and she wanted a copy and she was seven. I went and burnt her, her own copy without fuck her gently and without cock push ups on it. Because I'm the parent, and I will I will censor the music that she hears. It is not – the government doesn't have to do it. I will be the one. Yeah, and you know, like you said, Senator Exxon at the time was kind of saying, what are we doing here? We're not passing law, and somebody goes and whispers in his ear. And then you look 50 years later, however time it's been, 40 years later, nearly. And, and you know, you look at the Twitter files, you know, when they're talking about the so-called journalist Matt Taibbi, 
and they ask the questions and then nobody listens to the answers. They're all talking amongst each other and claiming their time. Uh, I'm just trying to get your feeling. Did we, have we advanced at all since 85? We, well, we, <laughs> we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so we've learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we've learned nothing. No, not that we've. I don't. It's a real tough call. Again, I'm just amazed at the pendulum swing, where you would think, you know, where we would think the uh, that now that the left is, you know, people have tried to cancel me. I was. I they didn't call it canceling back then. After those censorship hearings, I went through a lot of shit. My band was essentially canceled. Yeah. It did not was not a wise move for me at that time. Um, you know, so, but they didn't call it that. Now they have a name for it. Uh, no, and I'm concerned that with certain, well, well social media has just opened the barn door and let the, the gate, you know, let the, open the corral and let all the, everybody out, let all the horses out. I mean, it's real. we're at a really, at a weird point where people think free speech is just saying anything you want. And that is the anarchist, the Elon Musk, I'm a genius idiot a view of it. Uh, you, people, I say, free speech is saying anything you want, whatever you want, without any responsibility, without any having to concern yourself with the ramifications on any level. To me, that is not free speech. It was never the intention, you know, of of the, our forefathers. And it was, and again, people in the world who can't even speak say truth, let alone blatant lies, without being uh, persecuted. Well, that that's always the case in history, right? Anyone who speaks up against the system usually pays the price. Um, perspective. I think John Denver in, your, in, in this graphic novel says it's about perspective. It's about allowing different perspectives to be to not be shut down, right? And I think that's what the problem today is. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's we're not allowing all perspectives, so the parent or the consumer can make or the reader can make the judgment call. And there's no and, and the and the information is just just assailing us, and it's, it's it is no it's not being fact checked on any level. It's left to the to the listener, the person getting the information, to fact check. But it's becoming more and more difficult to check those facts because basically, if you put any opinion yeah. into Google, you'll get plenty. Of confirmation of that opinion, plenty of you know outlets and, and and social media sites and news agencies who will say, oh yeah, that's true, you know, and even even the craziest, um, the, the craziest statements, but some, there are people there who will endorse and support them. So it's getting t tougher. You have to really work to find out what the truth is. Uh, it's a responsibility of each of us to do that before we repeat things or react to things. But I've been guilty of making mistakes and reacting too quickly, reposting something, you know, myself. It's 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 a tough time. So we're almost out of time. I just want I mean, you look great in the graphic novel. I mean, <laughs> the artwork is fantastic. You look like well, they immortalized my abs from, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, had, I had I honestly I had eight pack abs up to about the age of 62. And when Twisted retired. I said on the stage and a few uh, uh, each night, I said, people will say, we're retired, they're retiring. And I say, listen, I want a pancake. <laughs> I want a, I want a muffin. I want a carb. I want a carb. Carb. <laughs> I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm starving myself to look like this. I'm done. So the uh, bad news is uh, I, I don't have eight pack abs anymore and I will not be taking my shirt off on stage. But they are immortalized on but the is, cover. Is Suzette happy with the way she turned out in the in the novel? Um, you know what? She hasn't read it. She finds these things very aggravating. When she reads my start reading my book, when she started reading reads these things, she just gets angry. Um, I was I was a handful at back in those days. So it triggers a lot of difficult memories for her. I mean, I look at myself walking in there in the video, and I go, how on earth? Did you walk in pants that tight with balls that big? It's physically impossible. You shouldn't be able to put one foot in front of the other. They should have been widespread. There should have been a wheelbarrow down between my legs. Yes. And I should have been lugging them in to those because damn that I have balls. But you know how how full of myself I was? <laughs> I mean, that I that I was unshake. I mean, good God. I go, I go, wow. 
And then they said, you want to come testify in front of Senate and the world? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let's listen. Come on, let's go. I mean, honestly, I mean, could I do it again? Yes. But damn, that I was that cocksure at that point in my life. What would you have done differently? Suzette had the pleasure of hanging out with that guy all the time. It was, it was a lot. He was a lot. Would you have done something differently now that you look back at the video and what you said and what they said? You know, you know hindsight's twenty twenty, of course. But is there anything you would have changed? Well, that was you know the, the short minus answer, the genes. The short answer is no. The longer answer is though there was a lot of like what did I do I, when I left there? I felt very abandoned by uh, the rock community for the most part did not understand the importance of what was going on. They were young, they were teenagers, and, you know, and, and like, now we know what records to buy. You know, that wasn't the point. And the industry, as I said before, they folded before we even spoke. They agreed to the sticker. It was a done deal. So, and a lot of the of other musicians, they laid out of it. They, they went quiet. They said, let's wait for the dust to settle. You know, and uh, they deliberately made that move. You know what I mean? Just, to, you know, let it blow over. And so by putting myself in that position, I damaged my band. I became public enemy number one, even though you, the fans, knew we were not the worst of the bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not the worst of the bunch by any means. But still, that face to mom and dad was like, oh, yeah, you can you go see Motley Crue, but you can't go see Twisted Sister. You know, and there was a lot of that. And as a you heard my mail was checked, my phones were tapped, my packages were being checked. I, you know, it was it was disheartening. Uh, I remember Ronnie Dio trashing me in the press. I Ronnie, remember that too. Yeah. And he said, "Who is D. Snyder to speak for us?" And the, my first line was, "I cannot speak for anyone but myself." He didn't even listen to my first line, and then reacted and spoke out against me. Years later, he apologized, but no one remembers the retraction. So yeah. would I do it again? Yes. Did I do the right thing? Yes. Uh, and, and as the years have gone by, it's made me this legendary character. If, I, if people call me iconic, part of it is Superhero. That. Superhero in a comic okay. book way. Part of it's that. I mean, I was, you know, I was recently, I guess they, the Spin Magazine put out their their top 100 rock stars of all time and I'm the top I'm in the top 15 I'm not sure I'm 15 between 15 and 11 I'm not sure what number yet but two years ago I wasn't on the list at all so as time has gone on that part of what is a rock star you know that that, that thing has elevated me it was more than just a couple of songs it was you're standing up for your beliefs and you know uh, I don't know man I, you know I just I, I like to think I did the right thing. I like to think I did the right thing. When you left did. Washington, did you get home and find the IRS that left a note on your door? Thank God, no. But I mean, I, you know, but I'm one of the most boring people in the world outside, off stage. So if they were tapping my phones, they were getting nothing. You know, married, got a kid, you know, no drinking, no drugs. I mean, I'm the guy that after I go up the stage, never went out, never been to the rainbow. I never went to the, I mean, I, did, I went back home. I mean, like to me, it, was, it wasn't a job. I mean, it was like, do what you do. And then, you know, you, you got a wife and you got a kid and you have a life. That, that was, I wasn't a lifestyler. That hurt me too. People like lifestylers. You know, they want you out in a Pantera killing people, you know, that, that, that's, that's someone you can really cheer on, you know, but D Snyder, it, it does the right thing. But again, as time went on, it's lent itself to who I am and, and people respect that. They go, you know, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of rambling here and I'm sorry, but that moment in time, that was the first time people saw me and said, wait a minute, this guy's kind of smart. He's got more going on than just, we're not going to take it. And it, there isn't a thing that I've done, whether it's been Broadway, movies, uh, uh, screenplay writing, uh, radio, where the people who hired me haven't said, I saw you talk that day. I knew there was, you, that there was more to you. So it was really sort of a, a change, a huge change, hurt my career, but long term, it, it, it enhanced my career because people started to see view me differently. I remember when you were on The Apprentice. I enjoyed that. I did enjoy that. Yeah, you showed yourself well in. Very okay. tough show. I, I always wow. saw people. I, I was on th two and a half, three seasons in various capacities. 
Um, but I always t- told them on the show, I said, yeah, Mark, what's his name? I forgot his, the producer. I said, you're not, people. this is way tougher than people realize. And you're not just letting people know. Like you'd see 20 minutes of the boardroom. We were in there for a couple of hours. Wow. Sweating it out too. And you're in our ties and jackets and the girls in gowns. And they would turn off the air conditioning, not to bust our balls, but because it's so loud. So in between takes, they would run the AC, but then they turn it off and all the lights. But we were doing two shows a week. So it was six days a week. And you're doing 16 hour days. So I said, you're not capturing that. People watch, you know, an hour long show. They don't realize that that show took three days and there were 16 hour days each. And then you finish the boardroom and you're fired and then wake up the next day and right back into the next show. So I said, it was, it's real. And they make it's it's all this sort of a game, but they somehow get it to be a pressure cooker. Yeah. But I remember when I got fired, I was uh, the next night I was on uh, Jimmy Fallon. He says, so how are you feeling? I said, well, I got fake fired from a fake job. So I'm only fake bummed out, you know? So was, that's the realization. After you step away, you go, wait a minute, that wasn't real. That, that was, that wasn't real. But it's hurtful. I'm sure it's still hurtful when it happens, right? Well, at I mean, the moment, but then you go, wait a minute, you know, cause I, my newspaper, I, my news, I didn't sell enough copies of my newspaper on the street corner. I mean, <laughs> What is that? I'm not a newspaper salesman. You know, I mean, uh, oh, my God, I got to sell newspapers. Call your friends so they come buy my newspaper. <laughs> it's, just, it's ridiculous. Well, Z2 Comics, he's not going to take it out now. Another great read for the holidays. Check out. Shut up and give me the mic. D. Snyder's book, fantastic autobiography. And you're missing one, Frats, my first novel, which came oh, out a yes. ago. Oh, yes. Plug that. Uh, and um, uh, there, I'm actually been approached by a major studio who's interested in making a movie out of it, which is amazing. Amazing. So you got Frats, you got He's Not Gonna Take It, Shut Up and Give Me the Mic. You got the new D. Snyder Funko Pop is available. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking for that special gift for the D. Snyder fan in your life. Plenty to stuff those stockings. Also, last year you were inducted into the Metal Hall of Fame, which was really cool. That you know, the, I, I don't know if I, it's the last show of Twisted Sister, but I guess it could be the last show, right? I I guess. Yeah, you know, I mean, we we went saying, off. Like, you know, well, I won't be surprised if we're reuniting this uh, this uh, election year to uh, champion some important causes. I can okay. see we're, we're all on the same page. Pretty much all of us are on the same page, and. Uh, uh, and, you know, and I could see us fight, helping fight the good fight to, uh, I mean, because this is a big picture election. And, you know, with things like women's right to choose, that's a big picture thing. You know what I mean? That's it. That's and that's going to hurt the other side. I say the other side because I'm not on that side. But uh, Mr. Trump, because people you say people that's you can't take you can't roll back the clock. We're not going back in time. We're going forward. The fact that my granddaughter does not have the right to choose just blows my mind, uh, you know, and that's that's something. And so there's, these are important, important issues. So um, it'll be more about less about the, the politicians and more about the parties they represent and what they represent, you know, uh, gun control. I'm a, And by the way, I'm the weird I'm the, I'm gunned up, man. I'm <laughs> Okay, but I am for intelligent gun control. I'm gunned up. That's all right. That's okay? all right. I'm just saying. So, so I'm, 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 I'm the moderate. You know, I'm, a, I'm that person. I drive a, a Tesla and an H2 Hummer. I'm an environmentalist and I ride motorcycles. I'm not. You know, these, these, these contrasts. And they say they're not. Just like I said, you know, uh, when when Al Gore said to me, "Oh, is, is sick motherfuckers? Is that a Christian organization?" And I said, "Christianity and and profanity have nothing to do with each other. It's you know, there is nothing to do. There's no thou shalt not curse." The eleventh commandment <laughs> that apparently was dropped or lost. No, and those those motherfuckers are cursing too. So, you know, so everybody's cursing. Like, I just did. Sorry. I'm losing it now. It's all right. But, um, it's all right. but I, you know, people say, but what's, what's a moderate? What is a moderate? I say, you know, I say, I tell people the middle, the vast middle need to speak up because right now the left, extreme left, extreme right are both. They're driving, they're steering the ship 
They're the loudest voices in the room. They're making the most noise. And the vast middle is sitting too silently. And they'll say, well, what's a moderate these days? They say, what's a moderate? If you're willing to discuss something and consider a compromise, you're a moderate. Because the people on the extreme left and extreme right, they will not give one inch. They won't talk about it. They won't. They will not compromise on any circumstance. So there's a lot of us in the middle who may be more right-leaning, right-leaning or left-leaning. That's fine. But you are you need to speak up if you're willing to have a discussion on a subject and you're willing to consider compromising on something because those are the voices that need to be steer, steering the ship, not the unrelenting, unyielding extremes on both sides. All right, All right we're going full political right. now. <laughs> You know what? You remind me of a Canadian. <laughs> Moderates. <laughs> oh, man, I was down here. I was I, I'm just going to, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm sending a message out to the Canadians. And this is going to the extreme right people who are very angry and very upset. And there are many who are leaving the country for freedom. You know, they've got to have freedom. I live in Belize half the year now. I love Belize. I've been down here 10 years it's an amazing country. And I was in a little coffee shop and uh, there was a woman and her 11 year old daughter, uh, clearly not Mayans or Belizeans or Mexicans. They were you know, white and uh, they looked pretty shell shocked. And I said, how you doing? And I said, I said uh, you visit your vacation? And they said, no, we moved here from Canada. And I said, oh, oh really? Why did you move to choose Belize? For freedom? And I said, well, first of all, we've got no box stores here. There's no Starbucks or Target or Costco. So um, that's one of the shell shock things if you're moving down here. Secondly, when uh, COVID was, was, they had the military on the streets, curfew, arresting people. And if you were caught not wearing a mask, it was a $2,500 U.S. dollar fine. By the way, the pay is $25 a day. So people who were being arrested making $25 a day were went to prison and had to pay $2,500. The point being, it's not freedom like you think. But yeah, it's not traditional freedom. Uh, I agree with you. America. Agree. It's Central and South America, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's a different vibe. Anyway, guys. Yeah, oh, it was a pleasure to talk with you guys. Oh. Um, metal. Uh, we didn't talk much metal today, but I guess this whole thing is metal. It's pretty metal. So, you know what? Speaking out is metal. That's what it's all about. No matter yeah. what your what, what your your point of view is, you know, it's it just as long as you know you're passionate about what you believe in. I yeah. think that's the most important thing. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, all right. Take care. Have a great holiday. You too. Uh, yeah, you uh, too. You know, whatever you're celebrating. Uh, remember those stocking stuffers, people. <laughs> you know i gotta say well i'll leave you with this i really enjoyed your graphic novel just as a good, nice plug the origin story is there the whole pmrc is there and then you even end off in a very nice tone and that's all i'm gonna say for the people out there it's worth the money and the last thing i want to end on is did you see my my thing about kiss farewell no my, tweet, my ex on kiss farewell uh you know i'm a day one kiss fan Day one, I was living on Long Island in Nassau County. They were in Queens, heard about this band that was wearing makeup. They were coming out with their first album, and I was like all about it, called Kiss. Man, I, I snapped that thing up and I had the first seven albums. Um, but uh, the idea of the farewell tour, you know, um, I, I don't know what to believe. And people <laughs> say, well, what do you think it's for real? I said, this is what I know. When I see the bodies in the Kiss coff coffins, then I'll say, they're done. They're done. When they're laying there in the coffins, I'll say, good it work. It might be over. It good might job. be over. What do you think about these? What do you think about these avatars, though? Uh, oh, my God. Well, that's, you know, I'm, you know, people, who knows what they'll pay money to see. They're paying money to see a Michael Jackson avatar and a, a pedophile. And uh, in Las Vegas, the show won. It's still a, a hologram, and they're doing all the hits. So, uh, you know, and it's it's been up and running for years. So who knows? You know, maybe, maybe. All right. Okay, guys. Right. Have a great one, man. Pleasure Thank talking you, to you. He's bye -bye. not going to take it. Thank you, Dean. Oh, I know. <laughs>